there. Today I'm going to lead you through how to draw a cardinal and a bluebird and some foliage around it and also to do a very loose watercolor painting with that. It's a lot of fun and it's very easy. So let's do this. Here are the supplies we're going to need for our project today. This is just a, a regular sketchbook, sketch pad and uh, not watercolor paper. Obviously, if you have watercolor paper, that's way better. But this is mostly for whatever you can find out of your basic home art kit. So uh, you will be needing a pencil, an eraser, probably not too much on this because we're loose about this, uh, watercolor palette. Uh, this is um, what I have and a lot of my students use if you don't have a particular one that looks like this. Use what you've got. Um, you'll need a rag for your watercolor with you using with the brush and this is clean actually but I reuse all the time if you don't have a rag for this purpose then go ahead and use a paper towel and then a container of water a brush this is um, I think a number six round from uh, Dick Blick I use uh, a lot of Blick art materials um, but you can get a brush of any kind and any size, uh, probably at the Walmart or um, Michael's or anything around you. And finally, um, for outlining, uh, you can either use the fine tip Sharpie or the ultra fine. And if you have both, you can use those in different ways. So I'm going to start with the cardinal. Now I'm going to do a cardinal in this area and a blue bird down in this area. If you get started and your bird takes up too much space, don't worry about it. We'll switch to another page or you can when it comes time to do the blue bird. Okay, so I'm going to start with an eye and we will come back in and add color, but in this situation I do like to add the shine just right up front. We can do marker over this. And I just want that little little bit of a shine across the eyeball. Okay, so then because of the way a cardinal eats and what it eats, it has a little different beak. It curves down at the top one and goes straight out there. And then straight down on the bottom. Now, they like sunflower seeds a lot, so they need a, a beak that can open a sunflower seed. And then we'll put the little breathe hole there. Okay, so by now you should have the eye and the, and the beak. And then I'm going to take, and I'm gonna go straight like that. That is gonna give me uh, a reference as to where, this is a male cardinal, where his um, crown is. And um, and then we'll just move from that line. We'll go back, we'll go around the head. We'll come back to this. And then carry this line down. And then down. And you'll get a tail. Okay, and then we'll come back up here and we'll come down. Now we're gonna do the breast. We're gonna come around, we're gonna go back up. Now, we're missing a wing. So we're gonna come here like a shoulder and we're just gonna pull it back because it kind of becomes part of the tail area so we'll just have it as if the feathers are all going in the right direction. And on the tail, those are all feathers also. We'll just draw lines like that for now. Now, um, they have, they have um, like a, a leg part and then it's backwards to us, but like a knee or an ankle. Um, in this situation, that's tucked underneath that, that joint. So then we're just going to pull straight out 
and add three claws per leg foot because um, they actually have four. They have um, like the three, the three toes here that go around the the log or twig or whatever, and then there's a back one, and it's actually more in the middle, and then they can grip. So we always have three in the front and one in the back, and in the way that we're drawing today, we won't see that fourth one. I'm gonna do a little erasing. And I'm kind of setting this up so we can do a, a branch. Okay, so I'm already done with my cardinal except for that crown area. And I'm just gonna kind of filter this in so it's almost like a triangle. And now the females do not have this. Um, the males are showier because they, first of all, want to attract a female. They wanna look good for the female. And then second, it's for um, um, directing prey away from the, um, mama and her bird babies so he's the he's the pretty one now um i'm going to add this this branch right now and your branch probably shouldn't be just straight line so i'm gonna wiggle it a little bit and do a little more wiggling here i'm gonna add i'm gonna add now I'm going to curve this a little bit because I want you to think that it's rounded. I'm going to add a little branch off. And um, I love to make my leaves. I'm kind of going off the page here. You can make them like hearts if you want. Or like this. And I will go over that a little bit more up here. I'm going to put this branch behind the main branch and behind the bird. So I'm going to bring it up. It's just to give some dimension to, so we don't just have a floating bird. And so I'm gonna put this, the twigs like this are never directly across from each other. And I love to make leaves like this. So it's like a flame, really simple. And then I just pull up for the main vein. And of course you can add more leaves. You don't have to have them like attached. You could just be subtly suggesting that they're there. And you can always bring down a branch from above, like it's in amongst the tree branches, not just one branch. Now I'm doing these like hearts, but you can do, you can get your kind of signature look. Okay, so Mr. Cardinal is complete until we paint. Now down here, I'm going to I'm going to go with the blue bird. So actually, I would like to start with the eye because that's where that's where we should just have a an anchor point is the eye. So I made it kind of with a shine spot. Now I'm going to go ahead and put also the beak, and it kind of because it's got an opening like a hinge. Um, we we do this little triangular or like a V almost opening where it connects to the beak. So this beak is pointier because the bluebird doesn't eat the same um, food. Okay, so I've got this head. It's bluebirds are really round and particularly when they're cold. So I'm gonna go around like that and then I'm going to a wing right here and make you think that it's off to the side a little bit and it's I mean it, this is literally a very round bird so I'm going to show a little bit of back there now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to show how round round this bird is they're really cute and easy to draw once you figure out how round they are now the tail I'm going to I'm planning on a I mean, I can fill this tail in, but I'm planning on a branch to come through. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I tend to sketch more, um, but in this situation, I just want you to feel confident in your lines. 
this obviously isn't the same tree or tree branches. Um, I just wanted to have little vignettes, which are little scenes um, for you to be inspired by. I'm gonna do another, and then I'm going to kind of give that impression again. I go around this like it's a three-dimensional shape rather than a, a flat, you know, like a piece of paper we stuck on there. And I'll do one more this way. Again, I did that kind of flame look there. I did that flame look around, but again, if it's upside down, I tend to do um, like a heart shape. And this one, well, this one's totally different, but that's okay. Now, what do we got missing here? Well, two things. One, the bluebird has an orange tummy and a blue, um, mostly blue, rest of its body. There's a little cream in there, but we're just gonna go for those two colors. And so, we want to just kind of get an idea of where the cutoff is for the blue. And the blue actually comes down because we want mostly the tummy uh, to be orange, not the whole body part. So I'm just kind of sketching that simply because I'm going to be adding the paint and we don't really need a line between there. We just will show where the paint goes. Now, here's the ankle like I was talking about before. Just bend a little bit and then curve again. So it's got a grip on there. Now, I could possibly show just a tiny piece of what's going behind to hold up that, that bird. Now this one, we just don't have enough space to show it. So I'm just going to suggest that the leg is bent the same way. Okay, see how quick we did that? Um, so we're all ready for painting. So I'm going to start with cardinal. And cardinals are often called red birds. And so we're going to go ahead and get red. And it's just, it's red, <laughs> really beautiful red. Oh my goodness, stop, stop, stop. I forgot this is key. They have a black patch right here. So, um, it's, I'm sorry I didn't do that. Okay, so back, back where we were. And I'm not one to just have to be perfectly filled in. I, the something about loose water coloring is just um, very appealing to me, which is great for kids because they don't um, always, they can't always get in the lines perfectly. And in this situation, I don't see that that's a bad thing. Okay, so on this part, I'm not doing it as, in fact, I'm gonna take some of that off because I don't want it to be quite, I want it to be filmy, like there's light coming through that cone. Because it's not solid, it's like a fluffy, feathery kind of there. Now, as this has dried in, it's gotten paler, so I'm gonna go back and add more red to it. You know, cardinals are so beautiful when they're in the snow. But one thing about this now, we've got to determine, so it doesn't look flat, we've got to determine where the light's coming from, and I'm saying, just for ease, it's coming from above. So the sun is overhead, and therefore, underneath on the tummy, Cardinal will be darker and under its wing. And I've gone in with brown, and when it blends with the red, it gives a darker red look. And that's what we're looking for for shadow. I'm gonna also do that under this wing area and a bit on the tail. Now, this isn't watercolor paper, so it will tend to ripple a little bit, but um, it will still look good in the end. This I'm not up to making people think they're doing something wrong just because of their um, products they're using. 
So we're not working on perfection here, we're just doing the project. Now this area, of course the eye is black, and we will go over that with Sharpie. And um, because I don't wanna lose the eye within this little area, I'm doing kind of a lighter black, like a lighter black, like a charcoal or um, just thinner. Use more water in your black so that we can see the eye. All right, so now it's really starting to look like a cardinal. Now, its beak is like an orangey red. So what I'm gonna do is I have this orange here, which is just a little, probably a little bright, but I'm gonna put it on and because of it being, yeah, that's pretty close. That, that's not a bad color. Now, these are probably not the colors you have. Everybody has a little different palette laying around the house, you know. So um, you may have to mix or just come up with, uh, you can thin with water your red and add a little yellow to it. But I'm going to also add more red on the lower beak part just to give that idea that the sun is from above. And in fact, here's another little tip. I want this to seem a little lighter on the top, like it almost has a shine spot, okay? So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pick it up, pick it up. I dip my brush, clean it off, and I'm using it like a sponge. Dip my brush in the water, clean it off, and there I have a little lighter area. Okay, now, I had to look it up because I wasn't sure, but the legs and feet on a cardinal are yellowish. So I'm using a yellow ochre, which I happen to have. I, I know a lot of palettes do not have that. So I'm kind of lucky here. Yellow ochre is kind of a brownie yellow, a very natural yellow, which it is. Ochre comes from the earth. So here we have our cardinal without an outline at this point. Okay, so let's go to our bluebird and we'll do all the branches and the leaves after. So our bluebird, I'm hoping this blue that I have in this palette is clean enough in there. I, sometimes we, in, in my classes, we just mix and and I'm, I am guilty of that. I mix within the um, particular paint pot. Okay, and again, I'm not looking for perfection. I think you should be able to enjoy yourself while you're doing this. So the bird on its back and on its wing, wings, that's more than one, but we're only dealing with one, is blue. Okay, so we're gonna go down here Part of the tail is tucked. So there that is. And we'll go back and, and get, get a little shadowing going in there. Um, as far as orange, now I have this beautiful rust color on here and that's closer to the orange. Now, I'm assuming you don't have the rust, so you can mess around with a brighter orange and then maybe um, add a brown if you've got brown. And um, see this is, a little bit more like you would find in nature. It's not quite as brilliant as maybe a parrot's orange or something. Um, and I'm just gonna blend this out because they do get light down near their feet. And this is kind of drab, so I'm gonna go into my orange, just pick up a little bit, just to spice it up a little. There. Okay. Um, I had to look it up. Now, the cardinal has a red beak, that, an orangey red beak that matches it, and it's got these beautiful yellowy legs. And the bluebird has a black beak. And that's why I'm not showing a little breathe hole on their nose. Um, we can do that maybe with Sharpie and then black feet and legs. 
So you don't need a lot, and I'm using a big brush, but you, if you stick with the tip and you don't have a lot of water and a lot of paint, then it won't go all over. Hope I can't touch that up. Okay, our birds are um, painted. Now we're gonna do the foliage and then we'll go back in and we can outline. Now you at this point, oh, whoops, let's add that little shadow here under this wing. But you don't have to outline if you like the look that you already have. Might do a little here. And now I don't like that because it's stripey. So I'll blend this out because I want it to just look fairly natural. Yeah. And there can be some lines on that bluebird's wing because right there it looks like that's the wing it's not going to open up it's just going to be this little triangular thing and that's that's not real okay so now let's go with brown on the um branches your brown your branches certainly aren't going to be solid one color brown but we'll start there Oof. i got a little sloppy so i got sloppy so I need to rinse my brush and pick up around there. And maybe I have enough here to kind of smear around. This paper, like, like I've mentioned, is not watercolor paper, so it doesn't work quite as nicely as watercolor paper. Um, and we just make do. This should be a good project for if you're working from home because it has just basic art supplies. Um, I'm gonna turn this because this bird is still wet and I don't wanna lay my hand in it. So I'm going to take and get, well, I'll go up here. And I got that really dark, so that's okay. Maybe it's in shadow there. Here's this. And I could just, you know, suggest those branches This is a little more substantial, and I got a lot of brown on there. I'm gonna leave it, because I want it to be a little different. And here's this one. go very carefully between toes but I don't have to go you know like I said this is a loose one so we don't have to be perfect I will add a little of this ochre just to give it a little more color varia variation here there we go and maybe a little yellow down here just here and there Okay, and then finally, I do a couple different greens on the leaves. I'm not sure if that's probably off the page a little bit, off the camera. Um, I get, that's really light. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm trying to rush through here because I'm not having you watch the video all day before you really get into it you can obviously do a better job if you're slow and methodical but um, again depending on the look you're after and i'm i'm a casual painter so we've got green on almost all of them once i get that on there we're going to do another color of green and or maybe blue i'll just see what i'm okay so those look flat to me um, I can always go back also on the branch and take, not too wet, but this is where you would get a little pickier and just kind of go along the bottom. It'll make it look three-dimensional if you go, oh, that one did the opposite, picked up the color, <laughs> which is what I was saying before. If you use your brush a certain way, it will work like a sponge. So that, I'm going to add a little more on here.
Now that just looks like an outline. And the way we're gonna remedy that is, I just wet my brush, I'm gonna go back in there and just blend it out a little bit. There, that's looking better. Do that over here. And then I'm gonna take this, bleed that up a little. Anyway, that's what we're, oh, I could do that just a little bit. Right here. Yeah. Just to give that feeling that there's dimension to the claws. Okay, so we'll go back to the leaves again. I've got this a uh, couple of greens on the end here. This one is really dark, but that's fine because if we can give a little bit of variation in the color, it becomes three-dimensional looking. And you can just lightly tip it. You don't have to, you don't have to fill up the whole thing, just touch There we go. Okay, now, at this point, you could leave it. But um, if you want, this is the time we will outline. So, um, and because it's Sharpie, I can outline without worrying about it um, bleeding into the wet areas. However, it will work much better if it is, um, in, it's all dry. So, I will, I know some of these places are wet. So I'm gonna turn this just to be, here, I'll come from over here. We'll work top over. Yeah, that's still, still wet. There we go. And you can outline everything. You can outline just parts. I'm just gonna do some of this. I don't want it to be too rigid. Okay. And then down this branch, which is pretty wet. You'll also notice that some of the school grade um, watercolors uh, get kind of chalky and they may seem like you're, it may seem like this is dried out. All you have to do is just wipe it on a paper towel or a rag and you're good to go. So I don't mind that it goes out of the line a little bit. It's um, it's just uh, more casual. We're not doing we're not doing actual por portraiture or anything like that. Let me go around this. There's his tummy, and up here, and then I'm just gonna flick flick like that. I don't want to detract from the painting that we've done. Now I'm gonna go around the black area up here. And then here's the eye. I'm just gonna get that shine in there a little more. Here's this, it's kind of like an upside down V. This bottom part is straight and this curves. All right, now I'll probably my time for this. Go around. And I, I like the sketchiness of this. It seems more natural. And just adding an extra line will, you know, add another kind of dimension. Here are these skinny legs. My dad had bird legs, and I think I've got bird legs like his. <laughs> okay, there's the claws. Hanging on there. Could do this one back here and this one back here. Okay, now we'll do, gotta be careful, don't lay your hand in it like I just did. And up 
here. Then we've got this little twiggy branch. I like to do my little sub branches in um, like a Y. Um, this one's a little more like a U. It's, uh, I mean, you'll find that quite often in, if you're out looking and you see some sticks, they'll have this Y branch. I hope this looseness, this freestyle, kind of encourages you to have a little more confidence to do this kind of thing. Okay, we're almost to you, little bluebird. You can always go back to, and there you can do this kind of thing, and maybe even where there was a branch. You could do that kind of little detail. Okay, right now, the way I did this eye, it looks like this little guy's sleeping. So we need to wake you up. There. Sometimes I do it and it my birds look kind of like they're ticked off at me. I don't know what I'm doing, but. <laughs> They don't always seem happy with me. There, you can kind of see that little mark for the nose, for the beak <laughs> nose. I don't know, I tend to do a lot of comparing to humans for animals. Now I'm gonna put a few lines in there just to simulate um, wings. Okay, so I think that's good enough for right now. Anyway, I hope you feel comfortable with a loose drawing, we were pretty specific for the birds until we got to painting and then they, we were able to relax a little bit. So anyway, till next time.